First thing you need to know is the difference between regular eight film and super eight. Regular eight here at the bottom and super eight at the top. Super eight has the smaller squares. You put the film in with the holes at the top towards the inside of the machine and this edge under the little white tabs. I have read that people are complaining about feeding problems. I experienced this when I ran Super 8 in at the regular 8 settings. Once I had the settings correct, I had no problems at all. The SD card, which I never take out, I can. It's a 32 gig SD card is the maximum you could use. Now this is a micro SD card with the adapter and it works perfectly well. Like I said, there's no need to take that out. And right here is the USB. You plug one end into here and the other end into your computer and I'll show you how to get the files off. Hi guys, I'm gonna thread this machine. Now I have the power adapter plugged in. I have an SD card in there and I formatted the SD card using this menu. And it's easy, you just go power. The next button is the menu button. And I know you can't see this when it's highlighted, but one, two uh, left arrow buttons will bring you to the format. You press OK. All data will be deleted. OK. Are you sure? Yes. OK. There you go. Now the menu button. I'll power it off while we're doing this. So that's how you format your SD card. Plugged in, formatted SD card. Hopefully my hand wasn't in the way. And you have to use these collars. These are for Super 8. Uh, regular 8 sometimes doesn't need them. So first thing I want to do is make sure my button here is set to regular 8 because that's what I'm using. I slide this sideways to open up the viewfinder and I'm going to clean it. There's white tabs under here. The film has to go underneath these little, this white tab here and here, and there's like a little channel here. So that's important for threading. The only time I've had it not advanced is when it was super eight film and I had it set to regular eight. So if you're having that problem, make sure you look at your film. So this just pushes on. Just like that, pull the lead up and it will go under, back, around, around again, around, and then into my reel. There we go. I'll hook it in first. Okay, now I'll line it up. Okay, that's the pathway. Now we have to thread it in. Now, these little squares always have to be at the back, regardless of what kind of film it is. Your film has these little punctuations in it that advance it. So now I have to put it underneath those two white things and it's down and that's perfect. So we'll just close it. And the way to start it is power. Okay. And this is a three inch reel. So you pick your reel size here and as soon as you go, okay, it'll advance. Now I already have the viewfinder set up. And there is a menu for that as well. In order to right, left, up and down. I suggest you zoom it in a bit and then if the film tracks a little bit, you won't lose the picture and have something on the edge. Remember, these were cameras that uh, you know had three lenses and everybody just centered everybody else. Now this will play back at 30 frames a second. And I'll show you in handbrake how to take it down to 20 frames a second, which is very close to the 16 frames a second that eight millimeter film used. 
My reels have finished. I'm going to move it over to my computer and get the files off the SD card with the USB cable. Film is finished converting. What you want to do is press OK and it will stop. I'm going to power it off and move it over to my computer. There's a USB cable provided that you can use to transfer the files off the device onto your computer. Here we are. I just turned the unit around. So this will turn into a big USB drive now. We press power. Menu. This left arrow. One, two, three times. OK. There is the SD card inside the machine. Film scanner, movie, and there's our file I created. I'm going to go copy. Go to where I want to store it. And this happens to be a California trip from 1981. Right click, paste. Now you should know that these are copied at 30 frames a second, which is high def speed. Now, your films originally were only running at 16 frames a second, so this file will run fast. After it's copied, I'm gonna show you how to rename it and to put it back to 16 frames a second if you wish. Bring you back in a minute. And there's my file copied over completely. And I want to rename this. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to name it what I named the file folder. So I'm going to copy my address as text. I'm going to go right click rename. I'm going to backspace that out. Right click paste. And you can see that I have stuff here that I don't want in the rest of the address. I'm just going to backspace that out. And I'm happy with that name. Just hit enter. And I've renamed my video. And you can see that it runs perfectly well. It's very old. And it's at 30 frames a second. I want to change it to about 20. Originally it was 16. And I think at 16, it's a little jittery when it's converted. So I want to use a file over here. It's called Handbrake. It's a picture of a pineapple. It's freeware. All you do is double click on Handbrake. And it wants you to drop the file in you want to convert. So I want to convert this file. I want to go to video. I want to go constant frame rate. I want to select 20 frames a second. I want to pick down here in my browse where I want it to be. And I want it to be in the folder right beside the one I'm working on right here. And I want to save that location. So I've got constant frame rate 20 in the video file. And then I want to press in code. And that's all there is to it. It will finish up and say Q finished, your progress bar is down here at the bottom. And that's all there is to it. I'll bring you back and show you the file. You can see the green bar is just starting here. It'll go all the way across. It says it's about 14 minutes to convert that. That's quite a long movie. And that's how you change your frame rate from 30 frames a second down to 20 so that your video files you've converted you know, look pretty close to the same as when you shot them. Hope this helps. Here's Handbrake finished. You can see that it put it to the file that I browsed it to, the location right here. And you just close it. Remember, set it on 20 frames rate and constant frame rate. And here it is right here. Works just great. 